Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. Yes. Woo! I hope you had a blessed week. And I'm glad that you're tuning in with, with us this morning just to be fed again by the Word of God. Give everyone the opportunity to come in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Instead of coming in, let's um, start off with a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for being a great God. Yes, Lord. For redeeming us of our sins, for making us alive in you, because you know we were dead in trespasses and sins. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your salvation work, Father God, that we don't have to do anything but have faith to believe in you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for saving us, for redeeming us, Father God, for adopting us, Father God. We thank you, Father, for presenting the Holy Spirit in us, Lord, that he would never leave us. Father God, we thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of our sins, Father God. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord, because you've been a mighty, mighty good God, Lord. And we know it's nothing that we can do to deserve your grace nor your mercy, Lord. But we thank you, Father, for all that you have bestowed upon our lives. And Lord, we ask you that you will continue to watch over and continue to keep us, Lord, that this ministry will go the way that you want to go, Father God, that you will be the head. And again, Lord, we are, we're just doing what you call us to do. Everything we do is to give you glory and honor, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that you will watch over the sick and the shunning, Father God, that you will heal their bodies, Father God, that you give them peace of mind, that you'll comfort them through their time of storm, Father God. Lord, we ask you for a major healing, Father God. We ask you, Lord, for those who lost their loved ones, Father God, we ask you that you will just give them peace and comfort during that time of trouble, Father God. Father God, we ask you, Lord, that you will fill those voids with you, your presence, and help us, Father God, to do and to be what you want us to be in other people's lives. Lord, we also, Lord, ask you to watch over those people who stand in need of financial blessing, those who stand in need of jobs, Father God. We know that you the provider. And Lord, we know that you can provide whatever they stand in need of, Lord. So, Father God, we present them to you, Father God. Lord, we just ask you, Father God, that you would watch over our, our world, United States, Father God, that you will watch over all those who have power to make decisions over us, Lord. Lord, in spite of what they want to do, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that whatever they do be, be controlled by you, that they can only do what's justly and what's fair. In spite of how they want to act, work it out to our good, Lord. We ask you to put every politician in your hand, Father God. We ask you to touch their hearts, their minds, and their spirits to make them look out for the people and not for themselves. And Father God, we just present all things to you, Lord. We ask you, Father, for your blessing. We ask you, Father God, that you will continue to work on us to, so that we may bring forth your word in the way that you give us. Fill us with your anointing, Father God, that only you can, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you touch forth, touch the past of the hour, Lord. Not only our past, but all pastors, Father God, that they will speak with us, said the Lord. Not their assumptions, not their thoughts, not their mind of understandings, but Lord, what you said, because the word don't need to be added to Father God, North Pastor Echoes from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father God, that he will bring forth your word, Lord. And then, Father God, touch our ears and our eyes and our hearts, Father God, so we may see what you talk about, so we will hear this word, Father God. And more importantly, Lord, that we will absorb this word and be doers of your word. And we thank you, Lord. Let that word fall on good soil. Help us to show good deeds worthy of your worthy of what you called us to do, Father God. And we thank you in advance for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, I hope you were able to join us. Um, we have fellowship, we have Sunday school with Fellowship Baptist Church and Kingdom Praise, as well as some other teachers from other churches. We come online at 9 a.m. by Facebook and Zoom to present the Sunday school lesson. And this morning, our lesson came from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and it was called We Are God's Handiwork. You know, everything that God has done for us, we can't do anything of ourselves. Salvation, he saved us. He redeemed us. It was by his grace and mercy. All we have to do is have faith to receive it. Nothing we can do 
accept, accept the Lord. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Next week's lesson is called God Gives Tools for Our Protection. And again, we're still in the book of Ephesians. We'll be in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. So if you get an opportunity, please read up on the lesson. If you need a Sunday school book, please let us know. Study the word because that's how you grow. Mm -hmm. You know, we walk in this life as a believer. You need to know what you're walking for and what God has done for you so you can reap the true benefits of what God has done. Amen. As a reminder, um, I just wanted to bring a, a couple of things to your remembrance. First, today is Communion Sunday. Amen. 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 So, um, if you get an opportunity, just get your wafer and your cracker juice or whatever you use to take communion and be ready because we're going to do that towards um, after the sermon. In addition, if you stand in need of communion cups, please email us, text us, give us a call so we can drop a few things off for you so that you will have it whenever there's communion Sunday. As a reminder, our outreach ministry is going to be on December the 10th. We're not going out this month, this month of November, but December the 10th, we'll be going out. We're asking that if you can donate coats for men as well as women. Um, more men stuff. This is more men that comes out than females. Um, jackets, toiletries, tennis shoes. This, they all, whenever we take shoes, they always go away. They stand in these tennis shoes. Um, and if you're available, please meet us at Front and Fed on December the 10th at 8 o'clock a.m. Um, you can actually meet us there by 7.45. Okay. Well, 8 o'clock. We try to set up so that we can be ready for those who um, come in to need stuff. So, and we need a lot of hands, helping hands, to help set up and to give out things. And if you can't donate anything, you can't um, meet us, please, please, please pray for us. Amen. Because we always stand in need of prayers when we go out there on the street to minister to others. Uh, Pastor Eccles want me to remind everyone that on Friday night, this Friday, November the 25th, there would not be Bible class. Again, this Friday, November 25th, we will not have Bible class. And I want to give a shout out to Mother Sumter, Mother Patricia Sumter. Happy birthday! birthday. Ooh. Happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. Okay. Our scripture from this morning, our sermon from this morning is going to be coming from Psalms chapter 103, verses 1 through 5, and I'm going to be reading the King James Version. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within, within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Um, our psalm, just keep her in prayer. She's still under a little under weather. Um, her voice need to rest a little bit. So immediately after me will be Pastor Eccles with the Word of God. Amen. 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 Sing. Sing something. I missed my song this morning. They tell me to sing, but I'm not going to sing and preach. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Amen. No. Um, this morning, I'm excited again about the Lord, about the things he's done, about what he's doing in the life of this ministry, about what he's doing in our individual lives. Amen. That's very important that each life be touched by him and be developed by him. So that's what I'm excited about. I want to see us all grow together. That's my desire. 
I want to see us grow together. I like to pull everybody. When I'm seeking to grow, I want to pull everybody into spiritual growth. Amen. All going to be in this journey together, getting to know the Lord better. This morning, um, as was read before you, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5, I will take my focus upon verse 1 in particularly today, but all the verse in your time this week of devotion, this psalm is so powerful. And I know that um, I'm not at a, at a level of preaching where I can really do it justice. But I ask God to take a little bit and help me do much with it. Amen. Amen. So um, this morning, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And I've entitled this message from that very verse, Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you talk to yourselves? All of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All of us talk to ourselves. As a matter of fact, somebody said the only reason that's the only way to get expert advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody said they ask them, they ask themselves, were they crazy? And they heard the voices come back and said, We okay. <laughs> 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 so we all talk to ourselves, or I'll call it thinking out loud. Amen. Amen. And uh, sometimes I answer myself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I talk to myself uh, when nobody see. I'm talking out loud. And how many, anybody have accidentally caught someone talking to themselves? Mm -hmm. Walked up with somebody talking to themselves? Mm -hmm. This is thing a lot. But this morning, I want you to feel, I want you to understand this morning that talking to yourself is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not convinced of something, how do you convince somebody else of something? Amen. 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 So this psalm writer, who is David, we know David, the great psalm writer, uh, wrote this psalm. And we're not clear. There's no clarity as to where, what, what time in his life he wrote it. Some people say he wrote it in his younger days. We don't know when he wrote it. We know he wrote it. But that's okay because when these kind of things come along, it lets me know that we can apply them to our lives in any situation. Amen. Amen. So sometimes the Bible is silent because it wants to be able to apply it to the current situation we're going on. And David, in this psalm, Begins the psalm talking to himself. Wow. So I want you to know you're not crazy if you talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. My wife's looking at me like she got thinking I might be a little crazy. I might be. I don't know. Because, <laughs> you know, when you're crazy, you're the last one to know it. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people that, uh, and this is very, I think this is a very important. I know this is about mental health month, but it's very important that we have not only take care of our physical body, we take care of our mental health. And sometimes you have to learn how to not only talk to yourself, but you got to learn how to get out of yourself and try to get someone else's perspective about what you're facing. That's true. Because sometimes that's all we do is think our own thoughts. The reason why there's a lot of uh, depression, the reason why there's a lot of uh, mass murder, people people justify themselves, believe it or not. We just had another mass killing uh, in a, uh, a gay nightclub last night. Mm. So people will talk to themselves and feel justified in what they're doing by taking a gun into a place and just shooting people because you disagree with them. That's a messed up mind. Mm -hmm. So David tells us in the very beginning of the psalm, he says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul. <laughs> uh, Spurgeon says this about Charles Spurgeon says this. This, this, is, this is a soul with all his soul talking to his soul. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is a soul with all his soul talking to his soul. Um. Uh, David said here. Uh, it, David says here a little, a little further down. I'll get to it later. Another psalm I want to refer to is Psalm thirty-four. We'll get to that a little later. He in this text is the first target of every spiritual truth. The spiritual truth, spiritual truth, is never ever meant to be aimless. The truth that always has a target. And where the truth lands, it either will transform or enrage. Mm. Amen. Amen. Every one of us need to learn and to understand that you are the target of every truth. Mm. Amen. Amen. If the truth of God's word doesn't hit you first, you cannot share it with someone else. That's true. Amen. You can share it with others. And I, I know I got, y'all, I'm testifying to this. You can have the ability to share with others and be lost your own self. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. Uh, the first person you need to preach to every day is yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. Before you tell somebody else, you make sure you know. Keep you focused. Yes. The, the first person that's, to preach to others and not preach ourselves first is to be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Because we're telling folks stuff that we really don't believe. Mm -hmm. Your soul must be the first, your first convert. That's right. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Your soul has to be the first one that's converted. That's the right. first one that's saved is your soul. Amen. 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 And how your soul gets saved is because you had to speak some things to your soul. Amen. 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 Your soul must be your first audience. Before you had the respect of being in front of another audience, you have to make sure your soul has been an audience of what you're about to say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Every, every uh, uh, entertainer will tell you they spend time in their craft. Mm -hmm. Every singer will tell you they take time in their practice, in their getting themselves. Every preacher will tell you they take time to prepare. Amen. Amen. I know it might not look like it, but I take time to pay. It might not seem like it to you, <laughs> but I take time to get ready for the word of God. Amen. Amen. You cannot effectively share a faith you don't possess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot give to others what you don't have. Yep. You cannot help others if you don't first, what? Help, help yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Charity, somebody said, this is not Bible, but Somebody said this true. And charity has to begin where? At home. At home. And then it spreads abroad. So you can't minister to someone else if you haven't been ministered to. Yes. As a matter of fact, we got too many folk out here trying to tell other folk what to do with their lives. And their lives, and their lives are falling apart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But God is looking for somebody who will be a witness. That don't mean that your life is always together. But it means your life fell apart. God put it together. Now I'm here to tell you how God can put it together. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is what we're doing. We're not pointing people to us. Hallelujah. There's a lot of leaders out here trying to point people to themselves. We're pointing people to Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I don't understand your full situation. I've been through similar things that you've been through, and God has kept me. I'm going to point you to the same person that brought me oh, brought me through. Yes. Hallelujah. How many know that's what we got to do? Yes. That the woman did well. What did she say? She said she came to Jesus. He told her all about herself. And, and she went to the town. So the same guy she fooled around with. She went to the town. She said, what? Come see a man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's our job. But to tell somebody, come see a man. She said, what she was excited about? He told me everything I ever was. Jesus read her. And I'm telling you, he'll read you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You Amen. going to some talk card reader and soothsayer and searching your, uh, 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 your sign, your uh, astrology. Uh, astrology sign to see what you who, what kind of person you can be with. You gotta get your eyes off creation and put your eyes on creator. Yes. Yes. He, you want to be read? Let him read you. Yes. Hallelujah. He'll read you every line. 66 books, him reading you and showing to you who he is. Amen. Amen. He said, Amen. so to preach to others, to preach to others and not to preach to me is being a is a performer. As someone who can perform and tell you had somebody tell you praise God, praise God, but you've never seen him praise God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have somebody can work you up to a frenzy, but you never see them praise God. Mm. They know the words, but they don't know the the, the message, the, the messenger himself. Amen. Amen. It's fine to know the words to say. It's fine to work people up into a frenzy, but I want to know this. I want to know all you convinced of what you're saying. Mm. Uh, before we can encourage others, we got to do what? Encourage Take time to do it. Encourage. David had to do that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. David had been in a terrible plight. He went out to help someone fight. They didn't want him to fight with him. He came back home. He got back home. All his wife and all the people, the men with him, all their stuff was taken. And David got, and all the men began to weep and get discouraged. And then the men that David was leading started looking at David, saying, it's your fault. So David couldn't find encouragement anywhere. His wife was gone. His family was gone. The men that he was leading were turning on him. You know the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of y'all depressed right there. Yes. You take some time yep. to encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Take some time to encourage your own self. You, you wait for somebody to encourage you. You got church in your bosom. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. You know, some people say you got you to gotta come to a certain building. I'm here to tell you that God is bigger than the building. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can come to a building and make noise. That means you're worshiping. Mm -hmm. Because the songwriter says, bless the Lord what? Oh, my, my soul. soul. He didn't say, bless the Lord, oh, organ. He said, bless the Lord, oh, worship leader. He said, bless the Lord, oh, oh, uh, preacher. He said, bless the Lord, what? Oh, His soul. soul. What does the soul mean? That means the heart of who you are, the, the very nature of who you are. 
The very pit, your, your emotion, your mind, and your will. So you can stand up and you can say all the right words. That'll be you blessing the Lord all your soul. Soul, soul, soul. He says, before we can excite others, we must be excited ourselves. Mm -hmm. Before we can minister to others, we got to minister ourselves. A Christian should not be a thermometer. Amen. Mm -hmm. We got one in here now that's kind of acting crazy. You put it on one thing, it does something else. <laughs> The, the, the thermometer, you put it, well, the thermometer reads the room, right? The, the, the thermometer reports the temperature. Whatever the temperature is in the room, that's what the thermometer does. We don't want to be a thermometer because all the thermometer does is, is report the temperature. We want to be what? The thermostat. Mm -hmm. Because the thermostat sets the temperature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. And so when it gets chilly, I can set it up a little bit. If it gets warm, I can put it down. So that's just the moment. But we want to, we don't want to be the kind of child of God that's dependent on other things to get our connection with God. Yeah. The thermostat sets the temperature. We don't need to simply report the truth. We want to be about the truth. Amen. David could not have had the authority to say to the angels, bless the Lord. He could not have the authority to tell us that everything had breath, praise the Lord. Amen. He if he had not first spoken to his own soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You have to get your own soul in line with God first. Mm -hmm. David had to preach to his own self first. Uh, your first ministry is to you. Mm -hmm. Take time to minister to you. Does anybody take time to minister to yourself? Yeah, yes. Take time to minister to you before any service. Or for, matter of fact, it's not even about going to church. It's about your everyday life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Get Amen. ready for life. Amen. Amen. Take Amen. time out to minister to you. Let God minister to your heart and life so you can then be, a, be usable. If you can only worship at church, if you can only worship when the music is playing, if you can only worship when the worship leader is worshiping, if, you only, if, if your worship is only generated by others, then your worship is limited. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I can't wait. Amen. I can't wait to get to church. You can start right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, we, you know, uh, uh, you gotta understand that um, limited worship. If you if you need something outside of you to get you to do what David said do, that means you're dependent on other things for your worship experience. It's limited to a place. It's limited. To an atmosphere, it's limited to an emotion, it's limited to who's preaching, it's limited to the soloist, it's limited to a song, it's limited worship. But Jesus said this, he said that he was seeking worshipers. He said he was seeking worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth, amen. amen. Those are the kind of people that Jesus is seeking to worship. We got to understand this, what David said, he, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. David says this, that he wants us to understand that real worship begins on the inside of you. And if you don't have fire inside of you, you can't burn up anything else. Mm -hmm. You got to ask God to do this. Tell, come on, Jesus, light my fire. Amen. Amen. Tell him to set your soul on, you know, because I can't, you know, we, we got to understand that this is a personal situation. When David said, bless the Lord, all my soul and all that's within me, he's calling on all his faculties to come on and bless God for who he is. Then he says this. He said, bless the Lord, all my soul, all that's within me. He said, bless his holy name. You got to realize what he's using here. He's using the name. He says, bless the Lord. He's talking about the Lord Jehovah. Y'all know what kind of power he's got? He says, bless the Lord. He said, bless Jehovah. Jehovah is God's personal name. Jehovah or Yahweh is God's covenant name. Jehovah Yahweh is God's self-existing name. And in, in, in the Hebrew text, it's Y-H-W-H. -H. Amen. Amen. The uh, Tetragamation, I think it's called. Y -A, the, the Hebrews felt like the name of God was so holy, you shouldn't pronounce it. So every time they got by it, they would just skip by his name because they were afraid they were going to take the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. So they had four consonants where we can't, it's unpronounceable. Only became Jehovah or Yahweh because we added syllables from another name, Adonai. And added syllables there and it became Yahweh. So we got whole religions that are based on the whole religion of calling Jesus Jehovah when that's not even the name of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? The mm -hmm. truth will set you free. Yeah. You got whole religions based on that. I'm sorry, they call, G they call God. If you don't say Jehovah, you're not addressing him by his name. But that's not, that's the name we, we try to pronounce it with. It's actually Y-H-W, unpronounceable, more like Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hey, people writing and saying, why do you use the name Jesus when you know his name is Yeshua? And I said, because I'm English speaking. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. And we've got to understand that. Yes, the name's changed through, uh, uh, through translation. Yes, the name's changed. But you got to understand, you got to apply it to everything. And we got to go, all of us, they have to be Greek scholars to go read it. But because it's translated to English, we know his name. We know they didn't have a J in uh, the Greek alphabet. We know it's called Yah. We know that, but we're not Greeks. Matter of fact, this Greek is not even spoken anymore. It's mm -hmm. Koine Greek. And people get all caught up in, in names and, and titles and be passionate, argumentative to you about names and titles. But I thank God. Matter of fact, I know God is intelligent enough that when I say Jesus and I say he's the only son of God and I say he's virgin born and I say he's from everlasting, everlasting, I'm sure God knows who I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> it's like some magicalness come. There were plenty of people named uh, Jesus back in that day. Amen. Amen. So it's not something magical about the name. It's what he represents. Yes. There are plenty of people that called their son Jesus and Jesus and all those other things. There's plenty of people that did in that day they would call Jesus. It was like a, a, a regular name. But we talk about Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. We talk about the virgin born Jesus. Yeah. So it's not yeah. that you've got the label Jesus. It's who you are. Yes. Yes. His name becomes above all other names because of who he is. He represents God himself. He is yes. God himself. So don't get people caught up in these little dumb arguments. But bless his name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Who are you blessing? And let me ask you a question. How can you bless the Lord? <laughs> you know, I understand that. So, so David's telling a soul to do something that seems humanly impossible, doesn't it? Because to bless someone means that you're doing them a favor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to bless someone means that, 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 that you're the, the greater doing something for the less. Bless you. When I send a blessing, I'm blessing you. I'm bestowing something. How are we going to bestow something on God? But when David says bless, he's not talking about we doing something with God. How do we realize who God is? Mm -hmm. If God needed something, he wouldn't come to us for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Not at all. God doesn't need his very name Jehovah means a self-existing one. That's right. And I was thinking about God when I was uh, getting ready, brushing my teeth, getting ready for service. I, I was thinking about God and I thought, well, God, you're the only one. That we that 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 um that that we bless and we elevate and you, don't, and you don't need nothing from us. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. God, mm -hmm. God not asking the blessing because he needs something. He's complete all in of himself. Mm -hmm. God is asking us to bless him because he's worthy. Ha! Amen. Yeah. Woo! And he doesn't need anything from him because he's God. But the songwriter said this. David said this in Psalm 34. He says, "I will bless the Lord." Mm -hmm. Psalm 34, 1. He said, I will bless the Lord at what? All times. All times. Yes. And his praise should what? Continually be in my mouth. So we can know that blessing the Lord is having his praise. Mm -hmm. Amen. Blessing the Lord is giving him what he's due. So you can bless the Lord that God, God's not up there no ego trip needing you to pump him up for something. He's God all by himself. Right. He's not waiting for us to crown him Lord of Lord. He is Lord of Lord. Whether yes. you ever say it or not, he's still, he's not waiting on us to do nothing. He don't need anything. But the common response to those of us that love the Lord, who say we love the Lord, the common response ought to be to respond to God with a thankful heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. And all that's within me. So David got his soul involved. So you can come to church, and I'm telling you, God is looking for soulful worship. Not soulless worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not with your hands and your mouth. It's that then it start with the heart. Yeah. Jesus said he was seeking worshipers that worship him in spirit. That means my spirit is connected to his spirit. Oh, I want to know you're connected this morning. Amen. My spirit is connected to his spirit. And when his spirit is connected to my spirit, he will let me know how worthy God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when my spirit is connected to his spirit, my spirit will tell my mind is you better think about what God has done. Amen. Bless the Lord, all my soul, all that's within me. So everything I got, with everything I am, I want to bless the Lord. And bless the Lord doesn't mean walk around the, uh, uh, saying praise the Lord all the time. What it means is that I want my, my life to reflect my gratitude. Y'all, come on with me this morning. Mm -hmm. I know I'm walking a little bit, but, but I want my life to reflect my gratitude. Yes. Because he says, his, bless what? His holy name. Mm -hmm. Then that just, am I reading here? Bless the Lord. Yes. He said, bless his holy name. You know, uh, uh, sinful folk don't like holiness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Holiness is, holiness is a bondage to those who are living for our lives. Holiness is look like restrictive and full of laws to those who do not know God. They say, I would be a Christian, but that's too many rules and regulations. They don't really understand. Mm 
Mm-hmm. They, 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 they think of holiness as being something that's holding you back. So, but, but we understand as children of God, holiness is liberating. Mm-hmm. Amen. Holiness liberates you. So how do you get liberated? It means that, 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 that the things that cause me harm, I no longer have to participate in those things. Mm-hmm. Those things that God says are wrong for me, whether I understand or not, I, want, I don't want to participate in them because I want to please God. So holiness is not a bondage. Holiness is freedom. Yeah. Can I explain to you a little further? What if I got this bad habit and I know it's destroying me? Let's say if I got a drinking habit. Amen. And I, I go to church every Sunday. I got to go get me a little taste things. And, 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 and sometimes I can't wait for church to be over. I come to church, I gotta do a little sip clock before I get there. Mm. I, I, I know, and I know it's true because I smell alcohol on a lot of breasts at church. And I understand mm. that, that I've got this habit so bad, I can't function even in the house of worship unless I get me a little taste. Mm. I, 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 I go to church, I, I, I'm praying, but you know, I still gotta have me a little taste. I got, I got these demons that are, that are driving me to push me to do things. That, and, and the doctors told me it's destroying my liver. The doctors told me I'm starting to look older than what I should look for my age. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's causing me to have relational problems. It's causing me to stay out late. It's causing me to do things I should not do. I got a problem. So I don't care how much I walk in those doors. It's until my soul gets together with the Lord, I'm going to always have that bondage. Mm-hmm. That's not freedom. Freedom is doing what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Amen. And when you say you want to live for God, yeah. bondage is doing what you don't want to do. When I would do evil, Paul said, Sit, the evil is always present with me. That's bondage. But when Jesus Christ comes into life, he gives us power. He said, well, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you today by the authority of Jesus Christ that you are free from every habit. You are free from every sin. You are free from every sickness and illness that comes your way. Why? Because Jesus died on that cross. He said it's finished. Yes. Now what I will tell you is this. You've been set free, but are you taking advantage of it? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You've been delivered, but are you walking in the liberty Christ given to you? Yes. You ever had a, 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 a product or, or something that you bought in your home or some computer, something that you bought and it had all these capabilities, but you didn't know how to use them? Mm-hmm. So what did you do? You got to go to the manual. Mm-hmm. You, you, you pick at it, especially if you're a guy. We think we can jump on things and just start working it. Mm-hmm. You go and you jump on it. I don't need to instruct. Let's go jump in and do it. And then you realize there's a lot about this thing I don't understand, especially when you deal with computers and all the electronics. That's stuff I don't know how to do. So eventually, what you got to do is go to the instructions. Mm-hmm. And those instructions tell you how to use what you already have. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you right now, the Bible is your manual. Yes. And the Bible will tell you how to use what you already have. God has said, you know, he says this, bless the Lord, all my soul. He says this in Ephesians, first chapter. He said that God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know who you are this morning? Bless the Lord, all my soul. He has redeemed you from destruction. You understand who you are this morning? Mm -hmm. He has sealed you with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. You know who you are this morning? The Father has made you acceptable in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ died for you. You know who you are? Bless the Lord, all my soul. Bless, that's who he is. He is our a deliverer. He is our king. He is the one that delivers us from our own, even from our own self. I remember sitting sometimes before the Lord saying, Lord, I need deliverance. I need deliverance most of all from me. Mm-hmm. Anybody need deliverance from himself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need deliverance because I keep getting in my way all the time. Even when I want to do right, I get in the way. Mm-hmm. So deliver me from the self. I remember praying to God, deliver me from the self. Because self is all in the way. This is what we got to do. We got to learn what David did. David, got to understand, David was training his own self. Y'all, some of y'all right now, listen to me. Your mind is all over the place. You're so, you're, you, you may be even disturbed. You may be worried about certain things. And I find myself drifting into worry about little dumb stuff. And God just let me know, even the little stuff, I'm concerned about. It. Amen? Yeah. So I don't have to worry about the little stuff. I'm worried about... This little thing and that little, how is this going to work? How is that going to work? And God would let me know, how would you act if you knew I had everything in control? Mm. If you knew that the Lord was sitting beside you right now and, and tapped you on the shoulder and said to you right now, I got everything in control, what would you do? You would say, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. But I'm here to tell you, he's not only by you, he's in you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and I want to let you know what he said. He says this, I will never leave you. Don't forsake you. 
Nor forsake you. Amen. So it does not matter what you're going through. It does not matter who likes you, doesn't like you, who spoke to you. None of that stuff matters. All matters is that your heart, you speak to your soul and tell your soul, it's time to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. It's so it's time for you to get yourself together and bless the Lord. You got to speak to your own life today and say, get yourself together. And you say, well, what a, how am I going to do that? He goes on in the psalm. He says, bless the Lord of my soul and don't forget all his benefits. That's what he says in verse 2, right? Y'all got to understand it's good to have a job. But I tell my kids all the time, it's not just the money you make per hour. It's the benefits that go along with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you today that we easily, for, we easily forget what the Lord has provided. He says, don't forget his benefits. Don't forget his benefits. He says this. Now, I'm not going to go into all of you. I want you to go down your own time. Go through a couple of them. He says, forget all his benefits. He begins to list these benefits in verse 3. He says, who forgive us all thy, who forgives all thy iniquities. Oh, y'all know Amen. God. That, that, that's enough right Amen. there. He said, I don't forgive something. He says, who forgives all thy iniquities. Iniquity means a, a, a big place. Anybody got a big place in your life? Mm -hmm. God can take a, a big place. A, a situation and write straight on it. Mm -hmm. Amen. God can take things a bit. Anybody know you got some bends in you that are against God? Y'all, mm -hmm. y'all, y'all know. You want to go with it? I know. I know because I deal with these things all the time. There's some stuff in us. The songwriter said this, and I, and I love this stanza. He said, prone to wander. Mm -hmm. Lord, I feel it. Mm -hmm. Prone to leave the God I love. Amen. Amen. That's what he says. But he said that, that, that come thou founder of every blessing. That's, that's a prayer right there. Amen. He says, come thou fount of every blessing. What I need you to do? To my heart to sing thy name. Mm. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. Streams of mercy ever, never ceasing. Call for songs of louder praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet. Sung by flaming tongues above. We sing, we like to get away from these old hymns. These hymns got some words, y'all. We say, God, come on now. Fix my heart. Amen. To my heart up to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. To my heart up to heaven. Come thou fount. You are the foundation of every blessing. And to my heart to do what? Sing thy praise. Amen. And although I'm prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. How many feel that? I've got this bit. But here the scripture says that he forgives. So in other words, he go with you in the courtroom. Y'all need somebody to go with you to the courtroom? Mm -hmm. You know you got a mighty good, a mighty good lawyer? Yeah. You know what he says in the courtroom? He doesn't say case dismissed. He said, I paid the price. Amen. 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 He, you know, we go in the courtroom, all of us are guilty. Mm -hmm. Have I been in the courtroom before? Yeah. You know you did the speeding? Mm -hmm. You know you did the crime? Yeah. And you go up there and you say to the judge, guilty as charged. Hey, the judge gets ready to, to bring out his sentence. And Jesus stepped in. He said, I paid the price. Amen. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. Forgiveness means he takes care of that sin. You know what God gives you? The Bible says every morning, brand new mercy. You know what that means? Every morning, when you repent to God, you know what he does? He wipes the slate clean. Y'all better give God a praise. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a friend in your life that will wipe the slate clean. Mm -hmm. You have somebody who loves you enough to wipe the slate clean. Because everybody you know will say, I remember you win. Mm. But aren't you glad that Jesus Christ could remember, but he said your sins and your iniquities, would I remember no more. He said, I'm going to take my laws now, those same laws you've been trying to do, and I'm going to write them on your heart. Mm. I'm going to put them in your mind. And nobody's going to teach you how to know me. I'm going to show you. Y'all better give God a praise. Mm. I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to show you my power, who forgives all our iniquities. Now he takes us to the hospital. He says he heals all our diseases. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, y'all, 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 come on now with me this morning. He heals all our diseases. Y'all got to understand this, that healing is not just always physical healing. Some of us need emotional healing this morning. Yes. But he heals all our diseases. God uses different ways of healing. You know what God can do? God can heal us through our own natural body. Mm -hmm. You know what God does? You know, the doctor can cut, but only God can heal. Mm -hmm. The doctor removes the stuff, but then he, he closes you up, and guess what? The body has these healing mechanisms. Y'all know the body is amazing. The mm -hmm. Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. You understand as a fountain of life living. God has put a fountain of life in us. You understand. I'm just coming in at, at 61 years old. I'm just beginning to understand the beauty of what God has done. Do you realize that if we would get the junk out of our bodies, that the healing would take place? Do you realize if we put the right stuff in our bodies and stop putting all this man-made stuff in us, that our bodies would, would be restored? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I know we got to leave this place. I know we all going to die time, but we're eating ourselves to death. Mm -hmm. We're putting poison in us, know it's poison, putting it in us, expecting the body to keep functioning. The body mm -hmm. is going to break down because we're putting the wrong stuff in us. And also your spirit, your soul is going to break down if you're putting the wrong stuff in. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. So put the Amen. right stuff in, the right stuff will come out. Amen. Amen. What you sow, you're going to reap. Mm -hmm. Reap good, sow good stuff, and good stuff will come out. Mm -hmm. Stop ignoring your doctor. Stop ignoring your, uh, the, stop messing over your medication. Stop doing these things. And when you pass away, we all wonder what happened to them. So many of my friends I know just did not follow what the doctor said. Dude, so God heals through the doctor, y'all. He heals physically. He'll heal naturally through our bodies. He also has medical technology to heal through. Mm -hmm. Science. That's God sent, y'all. The doctor's on the same side God is to get us healed. Amen. I remember so many times saying God healed me and God said eat right. Mm. <laughs> Y'all want to give God some praise right there. Amen. 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 I'm saying, God, oh, I got to all these things, but this hurt and that hurt. I got diabetes, all high blood pressure. Oh, God, heal me. And God said, I have. I want you to walk in it. Mm. I've given you enough sense to know what to do and not to do. Will you walk in it? Amen. Amen. So, what I got to do? Amen. I got to cooperate with God. Yes. God Amen. wants me healed. The doctors want me healed. I want to be healed, but I don't want to pay the cost. Mm. Mm. Got to sow. Mm. Tila. Mm -hmm. That means pause. Think about it. Amen. So there's a physical, natural body healing. There's doctor's healing. Then there's supernatural healing. Hallelujah. Yeah. I seen God do it. Matter of fact, we got some witnesses in the room here. Yeah. I've seen where the doctors may say one thing, but God says something else. Yeah. Amen. I've seen people who walked away from stuff the doctor said. Could, they couldn't even find it anymore. I've mm. seen people who suffered. I've seen with my own eyes people who suffered with migraines and suffered things. And all God did was speak to their life and they never had a migraine before again. Mm -hmm. I've seen people in my own life. I've experienced being so sick and being so, I was bent over sick one time. I remember being just bent over sick. Some kind of stomach poison or virus. I was actually crawling on the floor. And one of the saints called me and she said to me, she said, this is Sister Ham. She said, oh, what should you do? She said, I want you to calm down. And she said, I want you to call on God. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm so sick, I'm so sick. I want you to calm down and call, call on God. And I calmed down. She said a prayer. And while I was there on the floor, this warmth came over me. I, y'all, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about, I'm mm -hmm. talking, this warmth came on me like a comforting warmth of tingling. And tingling, I'm not saying everybody, that go, God doesn't always do this. I'm telling you, I've experienced it. And yep. when the glow came on me, everywhere the glow, the warmth came, the sickness began to leave my body. Mm. I got up on the floor and I felt hungry. I'm telling you, I understand that God does step in, not all the time, but he does step in and heal supernatural. He can do it. He, he got the power to do it. He doesn't always will to do it. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. But he can do it. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. And because he can do it, he doesn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. God's got power over his own power. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. I cite to you all the time. When Jesus walked into that pool of Shalom, there were sick folk everywhere. Laying there trying to get with a movement. They, they felt like when an angel come and trouble the water, that they would be healed. Some kind of uh, 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 fictitious idea they had about the trouble the water. And the first one that got in the water would be healed. Jesus came by and found a man had been laying there. He couldn't move fast enough to get in the water. And Jesus said, well, do you want to be healed? Mm. Mm. I'm asking this morning, do you really want to be healed? Mm. Yes. I, can I testify just for a moment? Y'all, I'm excited. I don't know what. I'm excited because that I've been diagnosed with diabetes about two years ago and almost died because of it. But God said, not yet. Mm -hmm. And now my numbers are almost down to normal. Mm. Thank mm. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, by the grace of God, almost 50 pounds lighter than I used to be. Amen. Mm. Amen. That's because of, not because of, of, of something that I could do it in myself, just listening and asking God to help me through the way. Yes. Amen. Amen. And doing what he tells me to do, and it's possible. So my goal is, by March, I'll be 62, I want to be in total remission of diabetes. Amen. Now, oh, don't tell me it can't Amen. be done. It can be done. Yes, it can. I'm already down on some normal numbers already. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Yes. So I'm here to tell you that God is the healer. Yes. Yes. Not only has he healed the diabetes, but he's healed my mind. Yes. Oh, yo, That's yo. I'm about, yes. I'm about to sit. Yes. My time yes. is gone. I'm about to go. He healed my mind because I was addicted to sugar. Yes. I was addicted to food. I was addicted to things where I would walk. I got to put my phone down. I got to testify a little bit because he said he heals all our diseases. I got to yes, testify a little yes, bit. Yes. I was addicted to so many things. I was addicted to the point I had to have something sugar, had to have something sweet. When I got finished eating, if nothing in this house, I would pace the floor like a wild animal. Mm -hmm. trying to, And I would get so embarrassed because I ate so much. 
I would hide the stuff. And my wife and kids come in and say, who ate all of this? Who ate all the cookies? Who had all the ice cream? Who ate all the cake? This cake was a whole cake. Now the cake is gone. And I would say, I don't know. <laughs> addicted. But I'm thankful to God. I didn't, I didn't just do it. I did it for health reasons. I know that the body's going back to the grave. But I did it more so because I want to be free. Yes. Yes. Woo. Yes, Lord. Yes. I don't want anything to have my life more than Jesus has my life. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't want anything to have control over me more than his spirit has control over me. Yes. I don't want any person to have enough influence to stop my journey. Hey, yes. I don't want anybody yes. to come yes. in the way of what God's going to do through my life. And that's, that's why Lord. you got to be wanting to be free. Do you want to be healed? Mm. He's passing by the pool today. He's asking you the question, do you want to be healed? Yes, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He's got the power to heal you from all your diseases of physical yes. healing, natural body healing. Doctors and scientists can give us medication and, and patch us up and cut us and try to get us together. Supernatural healing when God steps in and heals instantaneously. There's a final healing when it takes mm -hmm. us home. Mm. Oh, he healed oh, all. Yeah. We're like here to do it. He healed yes. all yes. our yes. diseases. If he don't heal on this side, baby, as soon as I strike my feet, strike Zion. As soon as I see Jesus face to face, guess what? Everything gonna fall off. Yeah. Everything, glasses and no, uh, 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 knee pain and back pain, all that stuff be gone because He gonna make me all new, just like Him. Mm. So I'm here to tell you four ways of healing. Amen. So when the songwriter says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul," we gotta understand. You got a reason to not forget what God has done for you. If you just got to, if you just let Him go to the, you let Him go in the courtroom with you. Amen. He'll say you're forgiven. Amen. You, yes. you just let them go into the hospital with you. He say, I heal diseases. Some of us right now, and I think a lot of our situation right now, we got a lot of people who are mentally ill. We got mm -hmm. a lot of people who are emotionally scarred. Yeah. We got a lot of people going through deep stuff. You can't see it. They look normal, but inside they're in turmoil. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is taking care of that in my life. He's working on me, and he can do it for anybody. Yes. Yes. I don't have it all yes. together yet, but guess what? I'm better than I used to be. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm not where I used to be. I'm praying. I, I'm, I, I feel like I can boast a little bit, amen, because of what God has done. My amen. soul makes her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it, and they'll be glad. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all of us. Bless his holy name, who, 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 who forgives all my, 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 my sins and heals all my, my diseases. Give God a praise right yes. there. Yes. Yes, Give God a praise right there. Y'all believe he does it all? Yes. Shout he does it all. He does it all. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Get into this, y'all. I told God, how can I wear this heavy truth? It mm -hmm. sounds real simple, but I'm telling you, if this is not something you put on Sunday morning. This is not a robe or collar. This is not carrying a Bible. This is what's going on. It's an inside job. Yes. Yes. This is where God begins to get deep down into the soul of who you are. God doesn't want what you can bring. He want you. Oh, y'all better yes. give God a prayer. Yes. God don't want yes. what you can sing. Yes. He want you. God don't want what you can clap out. He doesn't even want what you can dance out. He want you because you can yes. clap and dance and still not be blessed and low with your soul. Yes. yes. It's not your hands. It's not your feet. It's that when the soul get right, mm. all the other stuff falls in line. Yes. Hallelujah. When the soul get right, Amen. you don't you learn to say it right. People worry about you coming coming to church and being in the building. I'm more concerned about you getting your life right with God. Because you know, right now, Old Testament, they had to go to a, a place of worship. Old Testament had to go to a building and it had all this formality going on. But Jesus said now that he said to a woman as well, he says, it's coming a time you don't have to go to that mountain. Mm -hmm. He says, it's coming a time you don't have to come to Jerusalem or the mountain you worship. He said, because I'm looking for worshipers who worship God and spirit and truth. And your worship doesn't have to take place in the building. Your worship takes place before you get to that building. Your worship takes place all day long. So when you get to the building, we gather together, it all be explosive. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know just coming into a building that'll make you right. Coming to a building is not your is not your soul calling to come into a building. That's not your work. That's you coming to learn how to work. Mm. Right. You go in to worship, you go out to serve. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. And if you just worshiping and dancing and yelling at each other, I want to know if Jesus, you might be pleased, but I want to know if he pleased. Amen. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to know if he pleased. And that's why I ask myself, well, I know other people might frown at what I do, not like what I do, or belittle what I do, but I want to know, Lord, are you pleased? Mm. Yeah. I said, Lord, I did. You ever, had, you ever had a child come to you with something that, that you didn't know what it was? They drew in school. Mm -hmm. And they said, Mommy, Mommy, look, look at what I did. And you say, oh, that's a beautiful uh, picture you drew. And, 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 you, and you love them because, uh, what, they at least try. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming with a little mess of picture, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Aha, hallelujah. <laughs> and, 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 and only you can understand what I drew. Yeah. It, it, it's so damaged and messed up. But Lord, I look to you right now and say, at least I tried. Yeah. You know what I'm going to pray right there and say, at least I tried. You have people who are not trying nothing, but are criticize everything you do, but they ain't Amen. even trying. Amen. Mm. But, but that's my that's my new phrase, y'all. At least I tried. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, he kind of crazy when he preached, but at least I tried. Oh, yeah. he don't do it like somebody else did, but, but uh, at least I tried. And I want to yeah. know when my father looks at my picture. And it's more, and I try to do a sun, but look like a moon. I try to do a tree, but look like a man. I try to do a man, but look like sticks. And my father looks at it and say, at least you tried, son. You know how good it is? And, say, and you say, say something. You know how to make your father real warm? And say, and say Dad, 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 look at my picture. But I, and he said, son, that's a beautiful picture. And you say, and Daddy, I drew it for you. Oh, oh yeah. give God some praise. Oh, amen. He said, Daddy, Daddy, I, I drew it. I, I was thinking about you when I when I drew this. I was thinking about you. I was thinking about you. So I'm here today, Father, to let you know I may be jacked up all over, but I was thinking about you. I tried, Daddy. I tried. I tried to do the best I could for as long as I could. I was thinking about you. You're going to give God some praise right there. Yeah, and bless the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, my soul. Amen. And Amen. all that is within me. Mm. At least I tried. Yeah, <laughs> at least I tried. Yeah. And I did it for you. Come on, y'all. Yes, give God a praise. Yes, Say it to Thank God right Lord. now. Say, at least I tried. At least I tried. But I did it for you. Say your baby voice. Lord. Say your baby voice. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> at least I tried. Daddy! Y'all come on, come, Daddy. Daddy! Daddy! Thank you. Thank you, Daddy! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. At least I tried. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At least I tried. Thank you, Lord. I did this for you. Yes. yes. Come on, Mike. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we can't say thank you enough. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for breaking the chains. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Lord. thank you. Thank you for saving us from our own addictions. Thank you for Thank saving you us for our, ourselves, Lord. Lord. Mm. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. I can't help think, but think back to my dad talking about how he broke the curse of always eating, eating, eating. And you broke that same curse for me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, 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 I had a conversation with you directly, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I kept on reading forth that you, you went 40 days and 40 nights without food. Moses did the same. I said, I can go a few days without it as well. And that just those few days without eating broke the, the curse of always feeding, wanting that next meal. Just breaking Thank that. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I had to cut food cold turkey for a little bit. And you, you gave me the strength to do so. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I can't say thank you enough for what you're doing for me, for this family, for this ministry. Everybody has sent my voice as I speak. You're constantly working in all our lives directly. Thank you, Lord. Mm. With your spirit, you 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 entered us Hallelujah. all at once. With your body, Lord. Please continue to give us the strength. Let us remind us that we have nothing without you. You yeah. are all. We have nothing. We are nothing without you. Mm. Thank you Lord. Everything we see, everything that's tangible is nothing. It's just dust. Mm. It may be shiny dust, but it's still dust. Mm. Only your riches will last. Mm -hmm. Only the only the treasures we build up in your kingdom will last, Lord. That's right. Lord, please continue to touch us all. Give us direction. Guide us. We are your sheep. Continue to be our shepherd, Lord. Lord, help us to grab more sheep mm -hmm. into our flock. Help us draw more people closer to you, Lord, in all that we do. Please correct us when we may lead somebody else astray. That's what. That's one of my biggest fears that I do something that puts somebody further away from you. Yes, Lord, mm -hmm. help us, God. Help us. And all that I do, I want to. And I want help to us, draw people close to you. Let them see the freedom help that you God. give. Mm -hmm. The world sees the stuff that they can't do, but they they don't acknowledge the actual freedom they get. Yes. Mm -hmm. The joy, the Thank peace, God. the love. Yes. 
the internal bliss. Like you just, it just internalizes. You don't need to be happy every moment to have joy. Yeah. You don't need a circumstance. You don't need to be at, at the at, at the party. You don't have to be under influence of any substance. You you don't have to be uh, in the, in the intertwined with somebody else at that moment to have right. have yes. joy. Yes. Yes. Mm. You give us joy in your own. We don't have to seek these these little momentary moments of happiness. Yes. Happiness is based on happenstance. But yes. you give us joy. It's eternal. Yes. It's eternal joy because you are eternal. You live eternally with us, mm -hmm. Lord. Lord, please, as we take today to remember the sacrifice you made on the cross for us today, yes. your body was broken. You were stretched wide. Mm -hmm. You you cried. You died. You died for us. Yes. You, you, you died a miserable death to pay for the price of our sins. A price we can never repay. Mm -hmm. We can only accept from, from you and help we guide other people to accept your way yes. and your gift. Lord, as we take our wafers, our crackers, um, whatever we have, any kind of bread, um, even if you have a pork rind, <laughs> whatever you have, we do. We take it as a remembrance of your body that was broken for us. Thank you, and Lord. any kind of juice, wine, water, whatever we have, it, it represents the blood that was spilled for us. Your your blood was bled for us. Anybody that's ever had a clean blood out of a white shirt knows it's almost impossible to get out. That's that's the the red paint that was painted over our sins. You cannot see our sins anymore because it's been wiped away, completely covered by your blood, Lord. We can't say thank you enough. There's nothing we can do to repay you, but we just bend the knee and accept you as our Lord and our Savior. You are our Lord first and our Savior. We, Lord, you said the most important commandments were love God first and love thy neighbor as you love ourselves. Lord, please help us to love our neighbors. Show us the only person, the, the main thing, our only point of life is to worship the, the Father. Mm -hmm. mm. And draw people closer to the Father. Lord, please continue to touch us, touch this ministry. Let us know every step we should be taking as we take it, Lord. Lord, I, I, I also want to reach out to those people that feel broken as I speak right now. Let them know that the only person, the only way to fill that void in that heart is to get closer to you. There's no amount of drugs, sex, rock and roll, music, like anything that can fill that void. There's nothing on this side of earth that can fill that void that only the Holy Spirit can fill. Mm. God, please help us. Touch those that are seeking, that fill that void. Everybody has that void until it's fed by you, until it's filled by you. Everybody I talk to, they're missing something. They can't put their finger on it. But you are what it is that they're missing. Anybody that doesn't have you is not complete. Help us get people completed. Get them fulfilled through you, through Christ. And after they get close to you, let them get build that knowledge of you. There's different levels to this. Help us get to the next level, Lord. After we're saved, after we repented, after we have a knowledge that we have salvation, help us Get stronger. Put the full armor by the full armor of God on us. Mm. Give us, give us the, the sword of truth. Give us every all, all your. Mm. Uh, get us ready for your kingdom, fighting for your war, because this is the war that we're living in right now, Lord. Mm. We're fighting principalities that we cannot put our finger on. There's so much darkness out there right now. And they think they're winning, but no, we know you have the victory. That's we right. have the victory because we have you. Yes. That's the only way to live. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank the Lord today for the opportunity to share the word as we move into our communion um, service. circles have already prayed. We just want to take the time to remember what the Lord has done and we take partake of this cup. This cup is represent, representing the blood of Jesus and the flesh that was broken for you and I. So 
as your home with us, joining us in this service. I pray that God would make to give us that sense of his presence now as we begin to take together as a family. My family is now joining with your family to take this Amen. community together in remembrance of our great, our great Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said in the night you betrayed, he said, This is this is this is my body that's broken for you. He said, Take eat in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, he says, This is a new covenant, new testament in my blood. As we drink together, remember his blood that was shed for us on Calvary's Hill. We thank the Lord today for being able to join with us in our communion service. We pray that God's richest blessing upon you. Remember this Friday, no Bible study. We resume the Friday afterwards because of um, Thanksgiving. And on tomorrow, today is my mother Pat's birthday. Right now? Today is Mother Pat's birthday. But tomorrow is First Lady's birthday. So we're celebrating mm -hmm. all weekend, all week. We're just going to celebrate the greatness of God and keeping us all these years together. Y'all know we're working on 36 marriage. Mm -hmm. We're working on 36 years of marriage, and we mm. still look young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank God for <laughs> thank God for another day. Amen. He blesses us with another day. I pray your blessings upon God's richest blessings upon your life and your home. And join us here next Sunday morning. We'll have one of our associates preaching next week. So y'all get ready, get ready, get ready. Next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. And at 10 a.m. we'll have Minister Vashti Echoes coming to Ooh. bring forth the word of God. So pray for her all week. Yes. Say, Lord, speak to her. Yes. Speak yes. through her the words of life. God Amen. bless you. King Praise Ministry signing out. Amen. Amen.